Matt Vanacoro with Waze Factory here, and we're going to take a look at Retro Keys. Retro Keys actually has three different NKI instruments. We're going to take a look at the orchestrator first. This is the Multiman. And it's got a really unique sound. Now, of course, you can get in there and tweak all the individual things you want. I'm working with the brass section first. You see the brass section has a nice little filter with an envelope there that I can adjust to really shape the tone. Now I can turn off the brass, and now I've got nothing. I can add a little bass in there. So any of these sections can be enabled and disabled. I don't have to load the presets, although I can. You know, I can click in that presets area, go to the clavichord. But you can also enable and disable right there. So I can easily switch over to the piano, adjust the volume of the piano a little bit, and go ahead and bring it up at both the left and right regions and hear it, and I can have the clav in at the same time. So we've got a lot of sound design there. I've got a string section with cello and violin, and of course I've got some vibrato that I can bring in, and I can use this mixer down at the bottom to adjust the volume of the regions left and right of the keyboard, as well as the cello and the violin. I would decide, hey, I wish the violin was a little more present in that mix. I can go ahead and do that. Now, you'll notice that violin is sticking around for a long time. I can adjust the envelope of all the articulations at once, or just the violin, just the cello. So if I'm like, okay, let's pull the release back a little. Make it a little more Mellotron synth-like, you know. Uh, you can do that. So again, I've got presets located down here. Now, some of the things that are going to be pretty static for a lot of the instruments, but we'll jump and look at them in each one. I've got the effects page. The effects page allows me to add my effects without having to go into the edit mode of the instrument. So if you don't want to open up your DAW, you don't want to go into the edit mode and program anything, you can just really quickly go ahead and have access to some really great options. So if I want to add a rotator cabinet to really funk out the synth style of this particular instrument, you can, but I'll take it out for now. Now, the settings page is where I'll have access to round robin, velocity curve, dynamic range, and noise. So right away you can hear this instrument was a noisy instrument, and in order to have its true character, you got to put a little bit of that in there. But if you want total cleanliness, you can pull that noise out and still have really great sounding samples, but without the inherent noise that comes with the original instrument. But I say, where's the fun in that? Now, velocity curve and dynamic range, you can restrict the volume whether you get to the higher velocity samples. So you've got a maximum and a minimum control. And your MIDI keyboard, you can, if you want to adjust to compensate for the curve, you can favor the higher velocities or stay away from the higher velocities. So that all depends on how your MIDI controller is responding. And the dynamic range, you can decide to have no dynamic range, a little bit more true to the original instrument. So if I press a key really softly, doesn't matter. It's nice and loud. But if I turn the dynamic range up, now if I press a key softly, I get a lower volume. Although it's not lower velocity, really, because, you know, this original instrument didn't really have a lot of dynamic variation. So let's take a look at one of the other instruments. We'll look at the Compaq right now, the Compaq piano. So I'll close this one and open up Compaq. So it's a separate NKI file. Now you see I've got access to the noise here as well. And I've got three different choices, piano, honky-tonk, and clavichord. So let's check out the clavichord. Love it. Sounds like a good old retro video game sound. Now, once again, I've got effects where I can put them in serial right in a row. And I've got a settings page. And on that settings page, you'll see uh, I've got a little bit more envelope control right there of just the particular sound. And I've got a separate release volume control. So this instrument really did a little something on the release volume. If you hear when I play a note, let's put it on the piano setting. It might be a little easier to hear. Here when I let go, that little thump. 
so you've got the control over how loud that should be. So very important to have as you're shaping the tone, uh, you know, how much realism you want versus how much really clean sound you want. But such a unique tone behind this instrument. Now, let's go to the third one, all right, the Elka X55. This is a really cool organ, and as you can see, I've got two regions. I've got the right-hand manual and the left-hand manual, and I can play across them, as you just heard. So my presets are located right here underneath the title. So I'll go there and pick, say, the blues preset, and you'll see, change that right draw bar section for me, left the left one intact. Uh, so any of these white draw bars, control that red region, the left hand, and any of the other ones control the right region. Now I've got a drive control here if I really want to be super bluesy, of course, and get a little drive, get a little dirt in the sound. I've also got access to this rotator so I can turn it off completely or I can turn it on and control the speed of it using the mod wheel. So real, you know, authentic bluesy sound and the ability to craft the tone with the drive there. Now this instrument had some cool piano effects. You'll hear as I pop them on there or switch it to clav. And you can enable and disable each one individually, jingle and sustain. There's also a bit of sustain. You'll hear if I click on the left sustain, it's so, sort of like a really long release. So here's the right without it. Dead right away, right? But if I click the right one with it, I got a little bit more echo. So this wasn't like a, you know, a Hammond B3. This has a lot more craftability to be a little bit more like a synth. Now I've got access to the various percussion switches. So if you want to set various depths and heights of percussion switches, you can do that. All right. And the other thing that I've got here is I've got the vibrato. So I've got this sort of light and full vibrato. Let's make sure the rotator's off before I do that, if you really want to hear it. So you can hear it makes a pretty big difference as well as a brilliance switch here. So a lot of options there. Now, if I go to the effects page here, you'll see once again, I can go ahead and insert my effects. I can make it a little less dry and I've got a lot of choices there. You have full control over these manual organ draw bars, by the way, so you can click and slide them. And the other thing that's really neat is you can right click them. And if you have a draw bar on your keyboard, you can hit learn MIDI CC automation. And now look at that. I've got full control without my mouse of the draw bars. So you can control more than one. If you've got a MIDI keyboard that has, you know, a bunch of draw bars, you can get a little bit more of an authentic control over Organ X55. So those are three completely separate and really unique instruments you won't find anywhere else uh, inside of the Retro Keys instrument from Waze Factory.